Guys, this is a review for exam four for Math 98, uh, starting off in section 2.2. Uh, so these are all questions about whether or not uh, the data given is a function. And so remember for a function for every x, there can be only one y. So if we see duplicate x's, that means there's gonna be one more y, or more than one y associated. So looking at this first table, for instance, <clears throat> If I scan down the x's, I see there's two b's, so when the input is b, the output could be 3 or 7, so that makes it not a function. Um, for b, um, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, so all the x's are independent. They all go to the same y value, um, that everything is y is 2, but that's okay, it's just saying when x is 0, y is 2, and x is 1, y is 2, it'd be a horizontal line, which passes the vertical line test. So we can have repeats in y, we just can't have repeats in x's, so that one would be a function. Um, <clears throat> coming down to c, same idea is just written sideways now. So again, if I scan the x's, all the x's are independent. It doesn't matter that when x is 4, y is 5, when x is 5, y is 5, because again, we can have repeats in y. So that one is a function. Here, when x is 2, y could be 3 or negative 2, that makes it not a function. Uh, for graphs, we do the vertical line test. So if I can't hit the graph more than one time anywhere I draw a vertical line, that is a function. But you can see with this one, when I draw a vertical line, I intersect twice, which means for that x, there's two different y's associated. So that would make it not a function. Uh, for here, uh, we have write the following in interval notation. So interval notation, remember, is the thing with parentheses. So if we want to include uh, something, we use a bracket, uh, the square one. If we want to have it up to but not including, that's where we use parentheses. Um, infinity, so this is negative infinity out here, positive out here. Infinity is always a parenthesis. Um, so for this graph, it's going to, and also we go from left to right for interval notation. So here we're going from negative infinity, because this goes forever, up to but not including the 5, so I use a parenthesis. And then when we have a gap, we use union to kind of paste those together. And then we pick back up at 7, which is included, so square bracket to 9, which is also a square bracket because of the solid dot. Uh, this one, just one little interval, so from 2 up to 7. And so parenthesis for open, bracket for closed. Uh, number 3 is asking about domain and range. So based on this graph, by the domain and range, remember the domain is the x values, range is the y values. So the domain on this looks like it goes, it starts at 6, and then this goes forever up and to the right. So that red line right there would be my domain. It's running from negative 6 to infinity. And then for the range, that's my low to high. So the lowest point on the graph would be right there. And then it's going forever up. So that blue line would be my range. So that's going to be a bracket because it includes the negative 5. And then goes to infinity. Okay, this first set goes with the table. And so this is getting into function notation, uh, which is section 2.3. And so we pick up f of x. So f of x equals 4. Remember, f of x is like y. So this is saying y equals 4, and we're supposed to find what x is. So if we scan where y is 4, x is 14. f of 8, so that now the 8's replacing x. So this is like, oops, sorry, x equals 8, and we're trying to figure out what y is. So when x is 8, it looks like y is 1. Same idea, but from a graph, <clears throat> evaluate f of 0. So that's x equals 0. So when x is 0, y is 4. f of 2, so x is 2, y is 3. So we could just write it also as f of 2 equals 3. So for f of negative 1, we're looking for where um, the graph is negative 1. So, sorry, where the y value is negative 1. So if I trace over at negative 1, the hit graph right here. So that means it looks like x is uh, 6. Or sorry, yes, x is 6. And then for f of x equals 2, 
that's like y equals 2. And so coming up here, if I drew a horizontal line through 2, it intersects there and there. So we'd say x equals looks like negative 5 and positive 3. Uh, number 6 is pretty similar. So for this, we have find f of 4. So x is 4, y looks to be 4 f of negative 3, so when x is negative 3, it looks like y is negative 2. f of x equals 3, so that's y equals 3. And it looks like that happens right here. So right there and right there would be my x's, so 3 and 5. And f of x equals 0, so that is the, um, that's actually the x-axis, that's right here that's where y is 0. So we're finding the x-intercepts. So it looks like x equals negative 4, 2, and 6. And then find the domain range. So domain, that's my left to right. So right here would be not included, because that's my farthest to the left. And then right here, so ignore that part, um, it would be solid. So it looks like it runs from Neg oops. negative 6 to positive 6. And then my range, so my lowest point looks to be 4, and my highest point looks to be 4. So that right there would represent my range. And that is from, oh sorry, that's actually negative 3 up to 4. Okay, so then we picked up um, some function notation with, uh, with algebra. So g plus h of negative 3 means to find g of negative 3 plus h of negative 3. So these mean the same thing. So g of negative 3, if I find that, it's going to be 2 times negative 3 minus 1, or negative 6 minus 1, negative 7 h of negative 3, uh, there's h, that's going to be negative 3 minus 5, or negative 8. And then the same to add those two together, so negative 7 plus negative 8 makes negative 15. Now this one is g times h, um, evaluated at 3. So this time I did it as two separate pieces, I can also do it this way. and just toss them in right with the algebra and the multiply. Um, if it's more comfortable to do this, do that. If you're comfortable this way, also good. So this is six minus one, three minus five would be a negative two, so that's five times negative two, or negative 10. So number seven is evaluating with um, kind of a couple of different things. Um, so I'll just do a disclaimer right now. There's uh, some construction going above me in the, in the condo, and so there's going to be crashing, but I want to get this thing done and posted, so I apologize now for the crashing that's about to happen, I think. Uh, so for here we have f of x minus 3. So all of this is going in for the, um, the x's. So this is going to look like... Um, f of x minus 3 will equal x minus 3 squared minus 5x minus 3 plus 6. And then expanding this, it's going to be x squared, and then careful, it's a foil. This is like x minus 3, x minus 3. And so foiling that, you're going to get minus 6x plus 9, and then minus 5x plus 15 plus 6. And then from there, you just have to collect like terms. So x squared, those go together, I get minus 11x. And then 9, 6, and 15 will make 30. And while this does factor, there's no reason to. It's sort of like we just did a bunch of math and came up with, you know, the answer is 15. And then should we write that as 15 or as 3 times 5? You know, we would leave it as 15. So this is kind of the equivalent. So no need to factor. Um, this one is what everyone thinks this one is. So this is just tack a minus 3 on the end. 
So f of x is x squared minus 5x plus 6. So that's that piece. And then minus 3. And it's just collecting those. So x squared minus 5x plus 3. Number 8, these ones are the composite functions. Um, the other way to write this is h of g of 5. And that looks like kind of a little degree symbol. Um, I usually use this notation on the test, um, but you, you probably saw this one on my homework. So the first thing we do with this is find g of 5. So we start on the inside function, make an answer, and then we're going to evaluate the outside function at that answer. So g of 5 is going to be 2 times 5 minus 1, or g of 5, 10 minus 1 makes 9. And then 9 is going to go into h. So this whole thing becomes that 9 because they're equal. So then h of 9 is 9 minus 5 makes 4. Uh, for b, same idea, h of negative 1, so we'll find that first. Negative 1 minus 5 makes negative 6, and then that's going to get substituted into f. So we're finding f of negative 6. So that's going to be negative 6 squared minus 5 times negative 6 plus 6. And so this is 36 plus 30 plus 6, and that makes 72. Okay, and then this starts um, section 2.4. And so this is where we did just algebra with the... Um, with the F, G, and H rather than evaluating. So this is literally just saying to go F minus G plus H. So that'll look like X minus 1, which is F, and then minus G. Anytime you're going to subtract, you need a parenthesis, and then plus H. And I'll go ahead and distribute that negative through. You're welcome to do it in your head also. And then um, from there, I'll just collect terms. So I have just x squared down there. And I have x minus 5x plus 3x. So that'd be 4 minus 5 makes minus x. And minus 1 plus 4 minus 4. So the 4s drop out. And minus 1. f times g. Um, so that just means to foil. So x minus 1. 5x minus 4. So outside we got, or sorry, first I have 5x squared. Outside I have minus 4x. Inside minus 5x. And then plus 4. And my like terms, x squared minus 9x plus 4. Uh, same prompts. Um, so for number 11, it's saying h minus f times g. So here's h. and then minus f times g. We just did that on the last page, so I'll just copy my answer from there. And that was uh, 5x squared minus 9x plus 4. And then I'll distribute the sign. And collect terms. So for x squared, so I got negative 4x squared. For 3x, uh, 9x, we got 12x. Minus 4, and then minus 4 makes minus 8. Uh, h over g, so this is x squared plus 3x minus 4. I'm um, sorry, it's x over, or h over f over x minus 1. Um, but now, this time, there is a reason to factor. We have to see if we can reduce... So this is kind of like I got 20 fourths, and I'm going to think of it as 4 times 5 over 4, so I can cancel. So this is uh, x minus 1 up top, and x plus 4 multiplied by negative 4, add to be 3. And so those terms do indeed cancel and drop out. Uh, 13 and 14 are composites. Uh, one where we evaluate, one where we're... Um, at a number when we're evaluating at a function. 
So this one is like the ones back in um, 2.3. So this is f of 3 goes first. And we do 3 minus 1. And that makes 2. And I take the 2 and I plug it into h. So h of 2. Um, h of 2. There's h. There's h. So 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 4. So h of 2 is 4 plus 6 minus 4, or 6. So h of f of 3 is 6. Uh, g of f of x. So this is where um, we would take and put f of x into g. So here's f of x, and we're going to evaluate basically g of x minus 1, because this is f of x. So we're looking here and plugging in x minus 1. So that will look like 5x minus 1 minus 4. And then uh, just distributing, I get 5x minus 5 minus 4, or 5x minus 9. And so I think I skipped over number 15, so I just kind of wrote it in here. So this one is find h of g of x. We could also think of it as h of g of x. And so right up here, we're going to take and put g of x, which is this one, into h of x. So that's going to look like 5x minus 4 squared, and then plus 3, 5x minus 4 minus 4. And then that same expand right here, so that'll be, let's see, 25x squared. So I'm going 5x, 5x makes this. 5 times 4 is 20, and then double it makes 40x, and it's a minus because of that. So I'm using special products. You can also write them side by side in foil. Uh, 4 times 4 makes a plus 16. Uh, so 3 times 5 there is going to be 15x minus 12 minus 4. And then combining terms, um, I got 25x squared. Um, here I have 40x minus 15x, or minus 40 plus 15. So that is minus 25x. And that's 16 minus 16, so those just drop out. So that's h of g of x. So I'm, I think I'm just going to be off on my numbering um, and not correct the next uh, 25 problems. So um, after this, it'll show 15, 16, and 17, 18. So I'm off one number from the notes. This is the one and only time, quarter that I'll use these. So I think I'm not going to go back and try to try to fix it all. Um, so this is getting into um, 7.1 and 7.2. Uh, I'm just approaching them as kind of one section because they solve the same sort of problem. So uh, there's the quadratic formula that we picked up in 7.2, and then we also had completing the square from 7.1. And so the kind of the, this isn't like a rule or anything, but this is just sort of my version of it that gets you the easiest math available. Um, anytime you approach a quadratic, if you can factor it first to solve, that's going to be easier. And then if a is 1 and b is even, so if the leading term is just plain x squared and the middle term is even, um, you'll get easier math completing the square. Uh, that's assuming that you're decent at completing the square, and that's not always the case. Um, <clears throat> if a is 1 and b is odd, it will be easier to use the quadratic formula. So if you're only going to have one method to get there, probably quadratic formula, because you're given this on the exam, and you just have to plug in the coefficients. Um, but the simplifying on that, on those last couple steps, can get pretty rough. And that's really completing the square, even though it's you have to know a process for it. Um, the math itself is simpler. Uh, also, if you're taking 141, um, you absolutely need to know how to complete a square for some other reasons. So definitely don't shortchange yourself on that. So this first one, um, x squared minus 8x, so it leads with 1, has an even term in the middle, so I'm going to complete the square. And our first step on that is to move the 24 over, and that's that construction, if you can hear that, sorry. Um, and then after that, we take half of the middle term, square it, and add to both sides. So half of 8 would be 16. Sorry, half of 8 would be 4, and then squared would make 16. So we'll do plus 16, plus 16. <laughs> 
and um, so this is going to be x minus 4 squared equals negative 8. And then I can root both sides to undo the square. x minus 4 equals plus or minus. Um, 8 simplifies. It's uh, 4 times 2. So it'll be a 2. The negative makes it i and root 2. And then just add the 4 over. The um, next one, so this one, no matter which way we're going to go on it, um, something that will be really helpful is if we divide out the 3 first. Because if you notice, everything has um, is divisible by 3. So I'm going to do a 3 on both sides of this. And then that's going to make this be x squared plus 5x minus 2 equals 0. And so it's uh, odd, it leads with 1, but it's an odd, so I want to use quadratic formula for this. So in this case, a is going to equal 1, b is going to equal 5, and c is going to equal negative 2. And I'm just going to drop those right in here. So that's x equals negative 5 plus or minus 5 squared minus 4, and then a is 1, c is negative 2, all over 2 times 1. So x equals negative 5 plus or minus 25, and then minus and minus be plus 8 over 2. Or finally, x equals negative 5 plus or minus 33 over 2. So for this one, I will uh, foil and then see kind of where that gets me. So we're going to have x squared plus 3x. Uh, plus 6x, and that would be plus 18 minus 1. Oops, equals minus 1. Sorry about that. So this is x squared plus 9x plus 18 equals negative 1. And then add that over, and I have x squared plus 19x uh, plus 9x. Sorry, the upstairs is distracting. Uh, 19 equals 0. So that looks like it's going to be quadratic formula because of that 9. So this will look like x equals uh, negative 9 plus or minus 9 squared minus 4 times a times c is 19 all over uh, 2a, so 2 times 1. x equals negative 9 plus or minus this is going to be 81. And then 4 times 19 is uh, 76 over 2. And then subtracting, I get x equals negative 9 plus or minus root 5 over 2. Okay, so then we get into uh, chapter 8. And this one was exponentials and logarithms. Uh, we started some graphing uh, with the exponentials. So the way to do these again is to negative one, zero, one. Those are the good numbers. Uh, this one, let me write it a little bit bigger. So it's y equals negative five to the x. I'm gonna think of it as negative one times five to the x. So we're really just evaluating uh, five to the x and then making it negative. So five to the negative one would be the same as negative one times one fifth. So this is negative one fifth. Uh, 5 to the 0 would be 1, and then times negative 1 is negative 1. 5 to the 1 would be 5 times negative 1 for negative 5. So when x is 0, y is negative 1. When x is 1, y is 5. I always kind of do the easy ones first, and I get this one in the right spot. Negative 1, negative 1 fifth would be about there. So this is going to look something like that. And remember, we don't want to show it crossing the axis because it can't go up here. If I put in smaller and smaller values, this will just approach zero, but never get there. So we can't get above there. Uh, this one, let's see, we have one fourth to the x. So we'll do the same table, x, y, negative one, zero, one. 
So one fourth to the negative one is the same as if I flip it over and then do it to the positive one. So this is a four. Uh, anything to the zero is one, and one fourth to the one is one fourth. So if you do get mixed up on this one and get a fourth, realize you can't get two one fourths. So make sure you kind of know something's wrong. So negative one four would be there. Zero one is here, and then one and one fourth is right about there. So this one looks kind of like that. Okay, so this one um, is y equals five to the negative x, and it's going to be x y negative one zero one. So when I put a negative one, I get five to the negative negative one, which is five to the one. So this one is five. Again, anything that's a zero is one. And then five to the negative, but positive one shows as negative one. So that will be our one fifth. So it looks a lot like the last one. And that's because this is the same thing as one fifth to the positive x. And so that's why we see sort of similar graphs between these um, here and there. These next two were solving for um, a little out, uh, the base in exponentials. And actually, these are just solving for the base. So let me show you what that looks like. So first thing I'd want to do is divide the 800 over. And then that's going to get me um, 200 divided by 800 is 2 divided by 8, or 1 over 4. I think for convenience, I'll write it as a decimal since it doesn't, um, it ends nicely. And then to undo that 7, this is where we use the 7th root. So I'll take the 7th root of both sides. Again, to get this in the calculator, look for the little button that looks like that. And it's generally 7 and then second function, this button, and then the 0.25. If you can't find that, you can also do 2.5 raised to the 1 over 7. Um, and that will get it done also. Uh, if that makes it in the calculator well, then A should come out to be, to two decimal places, 0 0.82. Uh, for B, we'll divide both sides by 10, and I get 6 over 10 would be 0.6, and that equals 1 plus R to the 11th. And I'll do the same thing, but now I'll take the 11th root, and if you put this in a calculator, you get kind of, it's supposed to look like an 11. Um, you get this decimal that doesn't repeat it's something like that and that's 1 plus R now and I just subtract the 1 over and I get R equals uh, negative 0 0.05 so I went minus 1 minus 1 and that leads to two decimals uh, these next two are uh, 8.2 inverse functions and so in this where people go wrong on the test is they don't read the directions um, so I'm asking for three distinct things. One, find the inverse. So that's where we're going to swap the x and y and solve algebraically. And then to graph the original and the inverse. So for finding the inverse, remember that this is y equals 3x minus 4. And the first step is just to go x equals 3y minus 4. So we have it in this form, and then we want to um, get the y by itself. So add the 4 over and then divide the 3 on both sides. So we end up with x plus 4 over 3 equals y, or f inverse x. You don't have to write that. I'm just showing that this is this piece of the answer. And now we have to do um, a graph for f of x and one for f inverse x. So coming back here, I'll come back here with the y. All I'm going to do is pick a couple of easy numbers, 0 and 1, plug them in, and see what happens. So if x is 0, this drops out, and y is negative 4. If x is 1, then I have y equals 3 times 1 minus 4. So 3 minus 4 would make negative 1. So graphing that, when x is 0, y is negative 4, 
And when x is 1, y is negative 1. So that looks like it would go about here. And then x, y. So all I got to do for the other one is just flip the table. So that's going to look like uh, 4, 0, negative 1, 1. Uh, so this one we don't have to graph, we just have to find the inverse. So remember this is like y. So I'm going to swap the x's and y's. So it'll be um, x equals 2y minus 3 and 4y minus 5. And first thing I'll do is clear the fraction. So 4y minus 5 on both sides. And I'll distribute the x through, so that's 4xy minus 5x. These cancel, leaving 2y minus 3. And then here we got y's in two places. So the trick is to get the y's on one side, everything else to the other. So I'm going to subtract this y over, giving me 4xy minus 2y minus 5x uh, equals negative 3. And I'll add the 5x over to here. So I subtracted that. And I'm going to add this one. So 4xy minus 2y equals 5x minus 3. And then I have a common factor y. I could also factor 2, but it's not helpful because what all I need here is I'm trying to get y by itself. So that's why I'm not doing the greatest common factor. And now I can see what to divide by. So I'll just divide out 4x minus 2 on both sides. And then that's my inverse. Okay, so then next is uh, 8.3. And this is just a bunch of little solve problems using that, that idea of going from log to exponential form. Um, the formal ones in the notes, the one I always used was log base 10 of 100 made 2 because I could get my head around that 10 squared equals 100. So we're going to have lots of things in this form, and we're going to go 10 to the second makes 100. We're going to write it in exponential form, and that's almost always helpful for getting these solved. Pretty much it's always helpful for getting them solved. Uh, so here we got 4 to the negative 2. 4 to the negative 2 makes the x. And so that's going to be um, 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 16th equals x. This is uh, 125, log 125 of 5 is x. So 125 is 5 cubed, and this is 5 to the first. So if I, can, if I have something where I can't see it, um, if I can write it with a common base like I'm doing here, it allows me to dump the bases, and then 3x equals 1, and x is 1 third. And you could also see that up here, if you realize it's a cube root, it would just be one third, and that would be totally fine too. This one's a little harder to see. So this is log base eight of four equals x. So it's gonna be eight raised to the x makes four. And so this is gonna be two cubed x equals two squared, if I write them with a common base of two. So then three x equals two and x equals two-thirds. Here we got uh, log base x of seven equals three, so x to the three makes the seven. And then to undo that cube, we don't, we'll just cube root. So cube root, cube root, and x equals cube root seven. Uh, this one is ln x equals 3. So ln, we got to think of the little invisible e down there. We never write it this way, but it's helpful for showing it's going to be e raised to the third makes x. So e to the third equals x. And I'd ask for the exact answer, so that would be it. You wouldn't need to make that to a decimal. This one, um, so log x... And when there's nothing there, it's base 10 equals log base 2 of 4. So this is really saying, what power do I raise 2 to get 4? That would be 2. And so I can simplify this side. 
And now I can go 10 to the second makes X. And so then that would be 100. Uh, simplify the following. So this is log base 4 of 1. Um, log base anything of 1 is going to be uh, 0. This one is log base 8 of 8. So what do I raise 8 to to get 8? Um, that's going to be a 1. So this one, the property is log base b of 1 equals 0. And that's on the notes for the test. This one is the log base b of b equals 1. Also on the notes. Uh, this one, so we got log 6, log 2. Inside is log base 5 of 25. So this is what do I raise 5 to to get 25? And that would be 2. Log base 2 of 2, what do I raise 2 to to get 2? That would be a 1. And what do I raise 6 to to get 1? would be 0. So just simplifying. Um, for this one, I think the easiest way is to sneak into the next section. Um, I'm going to write this as e to the negative 2. And um, then ln e, so if I bring this negative 2 down, so that's using property 3 out of the next section. I get negative 2 equals ln e, and then ln e, and that was in this section, is 1. So this just reduces to 2, but I'm using a little property from, from the next section, which will be uh, 8.4. So these ones are 8.4, and we're supposed to expand. So this one, I'll write a little bigger here, log x to the fifth y cubed. And that square root z, we're going to write as z to the 1 half. Um, and we always want to get the roots into exponents for uh, expanding or writing, mostly expanding logs. And then remember, if it comes from the numerator, it's positive. If it comes from the denominator, it's negative. So this is 5 log x, and the, the exponents become the coefficients. And then minus 3 log y. And then here, this would be minus 1 half log z. Um, so each letter gets its own log. Um, the coefficients are the powers. And then the sign of the coefficients, again, tells you the position. This one, the worst part, is uh, getting it simplified. So I'm going to write this as x4, y7, z6. And this is a cube root, so I'm going to write it to the one-third. So this is really log, and then x four-thirds, y to the seven-thirds, and then six over three, that would reduce to z squared. And now it's just like this one. So this will be four-thirds log x, and then minus seven-thirds log y, and then minus two log z. So this one is right as a single log, so we're going the opposite way. Anytime you see that, um, write down log and then division bar if we see minuses. Um, I'll see people go log, 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 log all over the place, so you don't want to do that. So it's just a single log um, and all the stuff is happening inside, but not with logs. So this would be x to the one-third up top because up uh, like that looks like a three. Um, it's a positive minus 5 on the y, so that'd be y to the fifth downstairs. The z pops back to a positive, so that's fine. Um, so this is z squared. So you can either write this as x to the one-third, and then equally correct answer would be cube root x, z squared, and y to the fifth. For 39, this is log, and it'll be an x squared up top y cubed down below, and then a z to the one-fourth. And again, you can write uh, fourth root z, um, but in the denominator. Okay, and these last two are examples of log equations. And so with these ones, we have these steps where we want to write it as a single log first. So here I'll do log 12, and this would be x, x minus 4 equals 1. And then from here, this is the step where everyone has trouble. Um, there's a lot of where people just kind of make the log disappear on the exam. 
and it does disappear, but it's because we're changing to exponential form. So it's 12 to the first makes that. And that is almost always where people get messed up on the test, is just getting from this step to the next one. So it should look like that. I'll go ahead and foil while I'm here, so, or distribute x times x is x squared, x times four is four x. So 12 to the first makes this stuff. And then it's quadratic, so I want to get the, two over, the 12 over. So this will be 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 12. And then if this isn't factoring, check your work right here, because, again, that's where the errors happen, and it should factor. So x minus 6, x plus 2. And this is x equals 6, x equals negative 2. But we can't take logs of negative numbers. It's not in the domain. And so... If uh, if I put negative 2 in, it makes them both negative, so that one's extraneous. And then this last one, we'll write it as a single log. And this time, um, it's a minus, so it's going to be x plus 4 over x minus 4 equals 2. And then we're going to um, do 3 squared equals that. So 3 squared equals x plus 4, x minus 4. So this is 9 equals x plus 4, x minus 4. And then I'll clear the fraction. Those drop out. 9 times x. 9 times 4 will be a 36, x plus 4. I'll subtract the x over this way, and I'll add the 36 over to this side. So this one's linear, so I'm getting my x's to one side and my numbers to the other. So that'll be 8x equals, those cancel, those cancel, 40, and x equals 5. And 5 keeps both of these positive, so it's, um, it's a legitimate solution.